course, we saw Wes on it, seeing Manexo on it as well. And we're going to get right on in to game number one of the losers semifinal. Manexo able to get the spawn weapon. Yeah, you saw them basically doing the exact same thing of not throwing out attacks. They were right at the exact same height. Manexo happened to grab the weapon after that sort of ball tip like the beginning of an NBA game. And the damage is going to be now even might be more in Manexo's favor after he has found these five, Ooh. six hits. From when I even started that sentence, Manexo starting to run away with this game at least a little oh. bit. Charges that one up, calls out the spot dodge, gets the KO, middle of the stage. Big opening statement from Manexo. That side signature is such a big call out. Like, you're just stuck sitting there watching them charge up this bow, but D-Light into Ensig and Fiend immediately responding back onto Manexo. Still took a little bit of damage on that second stock, so it is in favor of Manexo. Someone needs to like check Bryn for performance enhancing wow. drugs. Cause she is she is on something, dude. That neutral sig KO'd off the top on Demon Island when Manexo was oh. in orange, and Fiend finds yet another stock. And Manexo just falling off there. You saw the stars come out. That was a stuffed recovery. I didn't realize he had burned so much else with that one. And so Fiend suddenly stealing the lead after Manexo had a fantastic start, oh, no. eating the down signature as well. The golf swing from the axe of Fiend still gets the wall touch. So Fiend's going to get up, but the tatami mat sends him flying. If Manexo would have been orange when he got hit with that DC, he would have been dead. Yeah. Even like the early stages of orange, he would have been dead. He was yellow and it sent him off the screen. Still able to convert into the downlight recovery to even up the stock count, but man, Fiend looking good. Has Manexo in the orange. Good dodge up this time. Not gonna fall for the same trick twice. Goes for the side light there. It has enough verticality to grab Fiend out of the side signature that does lift Brent up Ooh. just a little bit. Gets away from the D-Sig. Now, sometimes I forget how much damage that Spear D-Sig does, but Brahala Twitter is always <laughs> yeah. there to remind me that it does 42 damage. There's a there's definitely a bot out there that just uh, tweets out 42 damage every <laughs> time a Bryn hits uh, Spear down Sig. Manexo looking good. Put Fiend off stage, does disarm him, missing the down heavy, and the Tatami Mat does punish, but both of them getting into the red. Fiend again mix, missing the side air, but the neutral Sig and Fiend closes out game number one. That was some really good uh, spacing and dodge timing coming out from Manexo towards the end. You saw how close the end of that game was. And after that massive lead, first the orange KO and then the like yellow to orange KO that Fiend took early on, Manexo was still able to bring it back. Yeah, that was swinging both directions. Like there was a very real possibility towards the end of there that Manexo could have won that one. Loving to see what he's doing with the bow here. And of course, no character swaps as we go into game number two. Same map, Demon Island. Three, two, one. The walls were somewhat of a non-issue. Like you saw the KO that happened on the right side, the second stock that Manexo lost. I don't really think that was necessarily a wall issue of just Manexo getting caught uh, after in-air movement option, after in-air movement option, and Fiend just continuing the pressure up. Ooh, goes for the double D-Light. Dodge comes out from Manexo. Yeah, I knew that could have been big because he caught Manexo before Manexo touched down to the ground, but a good dodge from Manexo got him back towards the stage. Ground pound, a little bit risky there, but Manexo doesn't go for a turnaround. Instead, just opted to go for the safe move, dodge through and back off. Dashing coming out from Manexo. You see, he's throwing out so many attacks. He'll throw out more attacks than Fiend does because he's playing Koji. That high dex makes him tough to punish. Lots of safety on those moves with that high dex. Big side air though, puts Manexo off stage and disarms Pogo, eating the recovery and still denying the wall touch. Almost got it there though. Had he hit that neutral air, could have chased dodged up, could have gotten the wall touch. A little bit of a risky play there from Fiend. You know, he was uh, he was mashing that dodge button too. He was really hoping it was gonna come off a of cooldown. You've seen the gravity dance on Taunt coming out indicating there was a connection issue. That has ceased now that another taunt came out from Manexo. Fiend gonna honor that. A very South American thing to do. Yeah, I know you've said it time and time oh, again. No! Is you take those, Sparky. Fiend yeah, not really up. wanting to take those, but I mean, come on, it's it's a tournament here. Loser's bracket, Manexo on his final stock. 
Now you see him choosing to actively not move. Because if there's a teleporting option, you definitely may not be where you think you are on the stage. I think that might be what happened towards yeah. that part of the game where he fell. You see him just jumping straight up in the uh, air. Real Still close not to the a ball. You're seeing a little bit of left and right movement. Okay. I think he's making okay. sure he is on the map where he oh, thinks Fiend. he is. Fiend! Fiend homie stalking! What are you You're doing? You're so nice! Fiend! You're crazy! On, it's tournament! What? Oh, don't lose the set. If you if you lose a set after the homie stock, I'm not saying I'm gonna tweet a clown emoji on Twitter, but wow, I'll be thinking it. What an honor play from Fiend. You know, say what you will, but that was that is the highest honor is to homie stock twice to go down to final stocks here in game number one. The game one, it's the one that sets the momentum. It gives you map advantage in game five, but wow. Minexo staying at range from Fiend, avoiding a lot of these weapon tosses that come out, avoiding a lot of Fiend's moves as well. Hasn't found too many punishes. Gets a nice one there. Gets the side air, bouncing Fiend off the stage. Finds the neutral light as well. You heard the signature coming out from Fiend. Doesn't quite reach with a down light. Oh, GC down heavy. They are dead even now after the homie stocks from Fiend. Fiend has an axe in his hands. Oh, Minexo avoids the ground pound. Goes for the dare to punish. That's why you don't homie stock. Yo, you know, you could you could you could have given one and you would have been just as honorable. Two was going above and beyond. Manexo gonna take game number one, but Fiend going out in a way on his own terms as uh he only stocked twice. And we're gonna go into game number two. Demon Island banned out this time by Fiend, leaving Crystal Temple, Small Mammoth, and Apocalypse. We're going to Small Mammoth. Still a pretty long stage, has the long side walls. This is game three. He won game one. My bad. Did, did I? Yeah, okay. I, I missed I that was, No, no, I, I, that's on me. It happens so often when it comes out of my mouth and I don't even recognize it. So <laughs> I'm, I'm just used to you correcting me. No, you're good. This time I was the one who was wrong. We're going into game three, Manexo versus Fiend. And Manexo not having any issues starting this one off with the sword plays. Ooh, dodged into it. Just hits a raw neutral signature from the middle of the stage. Starting off strong, has a little bit of a damage lead here, but that punish is going to delete that damage lead, put them equal now. That's two sidelight stairs that Fiend has found. A little bit tough to find that consistently. Oh, and just a raw nice. neutral signature, this time from Fiend, getting the KO. Cotman Exo jumping. Yeah, not quite enough to finish off the stock, though. Manexo might have that turnaround, missing the pogo onto Manexo. Charging it up, punish. It's just going to be the side air from Fiend. Dodges All right, to bro. avoid the side signature. Both of them looking for the knockout. Neutral air sending him off screen. Has the axe. GC D-Light all the way over on the right side. All the way high in the air. That's going to be the KO option. Yeah, great recognition of how far that neutral air, the unarmed neutral air, launched Manexo. So knew that a high GC downlight would have been the knockout. Gives him a lot of zone coverage, more than like a side air would if he was trying to hit Manexo where he was there. Big damage coming out of that down signature. But also like if he hit a Nair there, that wouldn't have had enough juice yeah. on it to get the KO. So the GCD light, definitely the right option. Oh no, double. oh no! Yep. Gets the double for free after the GC down signature from Manexo. Just barely touches the wall. Yeah. He burns his dodge on the gravity cancel down signature so Fiend knows that that double down light is free. Massive lead here for Fiend in game number three. Almost getting the side air to finish off the stock, but Manexo finds the recovery, and that will get this sort of even, but he is deep red. Weapon spawn immediately comes to Fiend. It's the spear in hand, goes for the D6, finds the KO, even from the wrong side of the stage, has his choice of weapons, and he's opting for the Axer. You see him uh, practicing up those down airs, and you see that's the first thing he hits as Manexo spawns back in, and the second thing he hits, finding four, five hits now onto Manexo's final Ooh, stock. Six hits, Manexo can't even the land. Juggles. You just see him drifting left and right. What is going on? That was an interesting choice coming out from Manexo. I wonder if the lag uh, is coming oh, into play here. You see him recovering back to the main stage. He's gonna have to play near perfect. The ground pound coming out, misses, hits the side nice. light. Raw neutral signature from the middle of the stage again. That was a great read. Saw that Fiend was going to go for the downlight throughout the neutral sig, able to punish it. Also would have hit grounded, so just a really good option from Manexo, but he is behind in the red. Last stock here in game number three, and he's waiting to go pick up the weapon. 
Charging that one up. Fiend just completely oh. <laughs> disappears from the area. You saw him try and get that re with the neutral signature and go for the big play. And Fiend was just standing there looking at him saying, what are you doing? Hit the easy punish. Really well done from Fiend. Again, Not he, he got caught by the sidelight side sig once. Yep. That was game number one. After that, he's changed up what he did out of the sidelight. Lots of dodging up, lots of jumping. That time he went back and he just kind of waited. Monexo was expecting like, okay, I missed the side sig, but maybe he'll go for a dodge in above me. Maybe he'll jump in on me. So I throw out the neutral signature and Fiend, like you said, just kind of stood there as like, what do you, come on, come on. You think I'm not going to take this one? And wins game number three going up to one. One more game for Fiend to earn his spot in the loser's final. That's not several times that Fiend has punished that charge neutral signature read. The side stick has come out several times, once got punished. You saw there towards the end that Fiend was so far away, there was virtually no way he was going to punish that side signature. But Benexo getting a little ballsy there, going for the neutral signature yet again and getting punished yet again for it. So maybe we'll see him slow that down just a little bit. But here we go. Game number four. Still no character swaps coming out from Manexo. They both like to not really throw out too many attacks when they're going for the first weapon. Like, neither one really makes the first move. They're both right on top of each other and probably just mashing that button trying to grab it. Yeah, that is interesting. You'll see a lot of people like go in, just try to like dash jump side air or like a jumping nair usually. But really uh, interesting to see both of them just kind of jump straight at the weapon and not even worry about the other person going for an immediate attack. Double Ooh. side air and Manexo is gone. Fiend was more than happy to just stay out there. Wait for Manexo to come back. Fiend had some in-air movement options that he could burn while waiting. Knew Manexo had to go. Knew he was deep in the orange. Man, that DC was actually pretty close to hit. I thought it might have hit. <laughs> Fiend was just floating there based off of Pogo's inside airs. Like, he wasn't even using jump options. He was literally just floating there, bouncing off of Manexo's head. But Manexo does find the tatami mat. Still not enough to get this stock. Recovery off the top is going to get the KO. Manexo is going to have weapon control here. But if there's any player in Brawlhalla that, like, weapon starving is the least effective of a battle strategy against, it's going to be Fiend. He is someone who can find ways in on virtually any weapon, any player. Nice dodge. spot dodge there. Going back to Manexo that we saw previously, who had great spacing, great spot dodging on two different major signatures that would have led to the KO there for Fiend. So Manexo definitely keeping himself in this, this second stock. We could see the damage adding up, but the neutral signature comes in from Fiend's Axe, takes out 45 degree top right corner of the stage. Yeah, it can only avoid so many signatures. Is doing a good job of avoiding the follow-ups off of Fiend's neutral air. You see in Fiend do a lot of mix-ups, like he was going for side lights after a GC side light. That time he went for a GC down light, but Manexo doing a good job avoiding all that, but still, he is behind. Oh, look oh, how no. far that sent him. Oh my gosh. Easy side light. Oh, okay. he goes for the GC down heavy to get all of the active frames. Finds the D-Sig. That's got to be surprised that almost... forcefully sent to the blast yeah. zone. Weapon toss goes up. He was expecting okay. a little bit more downward force on that one. D-Light, gravity cancel, neutral heavy. And Fiend is going to clean that one up. No problem for him. 3-1 as he moves through Minexo. But man, PR20 making it this deep in bracket. Fantastic from Minexo. Yeah, I mean, uh, you got to give credit to Manexo coming in here, upsetting a lot of brackets, taking out some big names in the South American region. This is really nice for Manexo. Uh, Fiend, though, looking real clean, winning it out 3-1 at the end of that one. But Fiend, he's now he's got he's to make the tough run. He's got to go into Lopez, the person who knocked him into the loser's bracket. And then if he manages to beat Lopez in this loser's bracket, he has to go up into West, his longtime rival.